Hello everyone. I thought I'd take this time to show you the two different learning module styles that you can create within a Blackboard environment. For the most part, you have been working with the Start Here First in a couple of the weeks in what I describe as the Table of Contents learning module style. The icon looks like a notebook, and that's another way to identify this type of learning module. When I click to go inside the learning module, I have a table of contents on the left-hand side, and each page shows a different screen or information or web link or activity. And you can actually, as you know by now, can go through each item sequentially, or you can jump to any area or activity in the table of contents. Now there are some different settings. For example, you could force the sequential working through each page when you set this up so that a student would not be able to go through the table of contents and jump through anywhere on the table, but they would have to go sequentially through each screen or page. I'm not really too keen on this. I like to give students options, but there may be some times that this particular sequence is important. So I'm going to show you how to do that as well. Then there's another style that I call the folder style learning module. And if you want to see that, that's in your resources in your class under content development. But I'm going to show you how to create that here. So one of the things that you're going to have to do first is you're going to have to create a content area on your menu to be able to put these particular containers, learning modules, inside. So I'm going to go over here to the plus sign. Notice that I'm, my mouse is on content area and I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to add a content area and I'm going to simply call it learning modules. And yes, it's important to make sure that this is available to users unless you want to hide it. If you are constructing something and you're not ready for your students to see it, just make sure that little checkbox is left unchecked. But I'm going to check it because I do want it to be um, available. Now notice this little icon here. That means this link has no content. It's an empty container. It's an empty content area. There's nothing in it yet. So we're going to be building. So I'm going to click on the learning modules content area. And you may have noticed this when you were working um, in the editing of the Start Here First Learning Module, but if you didn't notice some of these items here, these are building buttons for assessments and tools and partner content. We did build an assignment. We're going to be building an assessment. So these should be familiar with you, but again, this is a blank area and you have been working in your Start Here First Learning Module, so this may look a little different to you. So yes, we have just built a blank content area we're starting from scratch. Okay, so I've, I go over here to build content. Notice I have learning module. I'm going to select that. So this is the table of contents learning module style. And I can put some information. I'm big on putting information on the outside of the learning module, like what the contents are inside and a little bit maybe of the activities. So I usually um, ask you to do that on the outside of the learning module. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down a little bit so you can see some of the other options. So this is what I was talking about earlier. You have some options to enforce a sequential viewing and open up in a new window. I leave it at no for both of these options because I feel like it's important, first of all, for the student to be able to decide if they want to go through the table of contents clicking or each page or item in a sequence. Now, I also 
keep it on no for opening a new window. I think there are a lot of pop-ups and sometimes that can be distracting. I like it to be embedded in to the infrastructure of Blackboard and not open a new window. Some things, yes, are a good idea and a best practice to open up in a new window. I'm not quite sure if that's good for a learning module. And I can actually hide these learning modules like I have done for all of you in, in this class that you're taking with me. I can track the number of views. Sometimes it's nice to know who has actually gone into the learning module and done the work. And then I can select date and time restrictions. Now, I really don't care about doing that only because I like the fact that these are going to be open once I open them. And so that's fine. I just kind of leave it at that. And um, I control them manually. But you may not. But I do want to tell you, whatever date restrictions you put into your class, just remember that you are going to have to change the dates every semester. They don't automatically change. So just think about that in your developing. And show the table of contents. Um, that's why I chose this, and that's why I'm going to leave it as yes. And then the hierarchy display, I can say none, which is what we have in our class where there's no letters or mixed numbers or Roman numerals, but you can change that if you like. And then once you decided all of the options, you can click on Submit. And that is your learning module with the table of contents style. And this is what it will look like if you decide to use the table of contents style learning module. And then when you want to start building, remember you need to go inside of the learning module to build your items and activities. And then you'll be learning how to create a lesson plan, which is the first item that will be in your learning modules. So it'll be exciting. We'll have fun working on our lesson plans. All right, here's the next kind of learning module style I can build. And that's just going over here and making a folder, a content folder. And I can name it whatever I want. Learning module. And I'm just going to name it folder style. But you probably want to say something like week one and that kind of thing. And then again, I like on the outside of my learning modules to have some information. That way it gives the students an idea of what's inside. Now for the options in a folder, you have some of the standard options like permitting users to view the content. Again, I could hide it. I can track the number of views. And then I can also um, select date and time restrictions. So once you're done, then you're going to submit that as well. And there you have it, the folder style. So two different styles, the same thing. Same information can go inside. What's interesting about the learning module folder style is that when you build it, you're going to be building it the same way in either learning module style but they're going to display very differently. So let me show you what that will look like. Okay, here are the two different learning modules in the two different styles. So I'm going to just click on week five. And you'll notice that when you build it, it's going to be built in the same way. You have the same buttons. But the table of contents has the option to go through the table of contents and click add a sequence or to go through each page like that. So anyway, this is in your class and this is what you'll be doing this week. Okay, so that is the table of contents. That's how that looks. So now let me just show you what the folder style I want you to notice that this is the same information. It's just displayed in a different way. Okay, so it's more linear. You have the same lesson plan, and then the same resources, same 
Activities to Complete folder, and the checklist. It displays visually very different, and there is no right or wrong. It's your style of teaching. You know your students better. I want you to decide which learning module style fits your teaching and learning style best. Okay? I have showed you for the last couple of weeks everything in a table of contents learning module. And now I'm introducing a different style. So you choose. Have fun with it. Again, this is a very creative process for all of you. And I want you to feel comfortable and ask me any questions that you may have. I can share some experiences with you that other instructors have had and why they have chosen one or over the other. So let's also discuss in the threaded discussions this week. So thanks a lot. Take care. See you online.